Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new real life car review. Behind me is the new Toyota C8R, the successor to a very successful first generation of the Coupe High Rider, a car that did a lot of good for the brand because Toyota boss wanted no more boring cars. Bold styling, inspiring driving dynamics, it broke the Toyota mold in many many ways. But it didn't scare away the traditional Toyota buyers and in fact it brought a lot of buyers from other brands aboard. Despite all of that, it's been a great success, the car had some sharp edges where the styling outweighed the practicality of the car. Toyota says they have listened to the consumer questions and consumer complaints when they developed the new generation of the CHR. So let's find out what this car is all about and as per usual we start off by a peek under the hood. The outgoing CHR was available with non-hybrid drivetrains and even manual transmissions, but it's not the case anymore with the new CHR. It's hybrid only. There's a 1.8, 140 horsepower. That's the entry-level hybrid. Then we have the 2-liter, 200 horsepower hybrid, and top of the range is the 220 horsepower plug-in hybrid. This test car is a 1.8 I chose this because I wanted to see how the entry level behaves and I think 140 horsepower should be enough when we look at the specifics this is the 2ZR Des FXE it's a tried and true drivetrain which doesn't mean it's outdated it's a very advanced drivetrain but we've seen it in a very various other Toyota models um, it's all aluminium and you look at the board and stroke the board is 80 and a half millimeters the stroke is 88.3 millimeters and the two liter versions of this drivetrain have a slightly longer stroke or a significantly longer stroke I must say uh, board 80 and a half and the stroke of uh, 97 and a half millimeters so that's a real real uh, on the square engine Compression ratio is 1 to 30, uh, the electric motor is a 70 kilowatt motor, the internal combustion uh, engine works at Atkinson cycle is 103 kilowatt. Uh, one thing to note is that this has only port injection, whereas the 2 liter versions have port and direct injection. I must say everything is very accessible and the only thing you'll be doing is changing oil, changing filters, changing spark plugs. Um, that's Toyota reliability for you. Over here this car comes with a 10 year warranty and when I looked at the, uh, the maintenance intervals um, Toyota says one year or 15,000 kilometers. And I think that's a good thing where other brands are trying to elongate the maintenance interval to even to 20 or to 30,000 kilometers and that's way too much. You have to take in mind that this engine uses very thin oil and yeah the warm-up cycle is pretty long for hybrid engines so you think um, yeah, the oil doesn't get much load on it but it's, it has a long uh, warm-up cycle and that makes it necessary to do a regular oil changes. Yeah, other than that there's nothing special to tell. I wanted to highlight the weights of this car. The car as tested weighs uh, 1520 kilos, so that's not super heavy, it's also not very light. But when you look at the plug-in hybrids, that's a significantly heavier car, uh, weighing up to 1735 kilos. Prices, I usually don't mention this in the real life car reviews because the prices over here are pretty high and the trim levels can vary per country. But over here the prices start at just over 37,000 euros for the 1.8 Active and they go all the way up for the uh, plug-in hybrid 220 GR Sport Premier Edition. Quite a mouthful with a price of 53,395 euros. Well, let's have a peek in the cargo area. Now before I open up the trunk, there's two things I want to point out. The brand and model name is in here and it's illuminated at night, but as you can see I now have the rear light switched on. This part is not illuminated while driving, uh, only when you lock or unlock the car that is somewhat of a light show, then it's when it's illuminated. Second thing I want to point out, we don't have a rear wiper anymore. Now I have been driving this car in the rain and just as same as with the Toyota BZ4X and the Lexus RZ, it has this uh, yeah, uh, spoiler thingy in here 
the aerodynamics during highway speeds keep the rear window clear but when you have the car parked you don't have a wiper to clean the window yesterday i had to use the rear defogger and it's pretty fast to get the car clean and in this trim level this is an executive one of the upper trim grades it's the highest trim grade for the 1.8 over here you have a surround view and a digital uh, rear view mirror camera so there are two cameras over here something you don't have in the lower trim grades and i think you might miss the rear wiper let me know down in the comment section what you think of that now let's open this up of course we have an electric trunk opener and a one piece parcel shelf so if you have to la uh, load larger goods you have to find a place to stow this away two things to note the 1.8 has a slightly larger cargo space than the 2 liter hybrid it's 443 liters for this version whereas the 2 liter version has 428 it's not a big difference but it is a difference when you have the plug-in hybrid you're only left with 350 liters of cargo space because the larger battery lives under the trunk floor a second thing to note is that there is a quite a step between this this edge over here and the the cargo floor itself and it looks like if you can get a, uh, an optional uh, cargo floor so you can lift this up uh, when i picked up groceries a loaded uh, shopping crate i really had to lift it up and drag it over this edge so that's something you want to prevent it would be nice it always level but anyways uh, it is a nice and very usable cargo space and you go on holidays for two weeks with two persons it's large enough for a family of four for a two-week holiday you probably need a larger cargo space but you'll probably be looking at the Corolla Cross Hybrid as an alternative for this car that's where the design weighs on the practicality of the CHR before I get into the interior space I want to point out the door handles this is an upper trim level I'm not sure how this is for the lower trim levels but you have to push the front end and it stays out and you open the door it's not super practical it is somewhat gimmicky but it works and it depends on whether you're right-handed or left-handed if this is convenient for you one big improvement over the outgoing model is that they move the door handle for the rear doors to the lower part it was up here and especially for smaller children it was hard to reach and now they have a somewhat normal door handle over here another thing to note is that they changed the window line the outgoing model was criticized for being fairly claustrophobic in the rear and it had everything to do because the window line swooped up over here so he had a large blind black spot over here now they extended this little corner window in here and it has a little bit more glass room uh, how that works we'll see when i get in the back let's hop in the front first so getting in the new CHR and let's power up the car as you can see this seat slides back and forth for easier ingress and egress when you power on and off the car it's a nice thing to have when you have a look around in the interior yeah um, the materials have improved greatly over the outgoing model oh, let's switch that off for a moment nice soft touch materials uh, different textures it's yeah very pleasing to the eye the dashboard itself is pretty deep that comes with the styling of the car and you have this larger segments over here that flow into the door over here that is uh, the mood light it's all nicely made but other than that it's very tried and true and modern toyota what you see the gauge cluster you see in different models the infotainment screen it's something that we know from other models and i must say this system is aging really well and under here we have physical buttons for the climate control below below there is the charger the wireless charger for your phone and well a very narrow center console it's the same as in the Prius two cup holders a gear selector a couple of buttons over here um, there is no place for my sunglasses to store anywhere it would be nice to have some sort of a holder in here and when you look around or when you look up you can see I have a glass roof in this top trim level um, yeah 
it's somewhat of a gimmick it doesn't open it doesn't slide and also there is no sun blind and on cold days you can really feel that the roof is sucking up the interior heat so yeah um, that's something you have to keep in mind if you have this especially that there is no blind to close the roof when you look around at the materials uh, the door panels have nice suede inlays uh, I think I mentioned the mood lighting in the doors I think it's nice there's only one strip over here that changes color with the mood lights the rear passengers do not get a mood light but other than that yeah it's very tried and true and the materials are very nice it's a very well built interior um, and if they would slap a Lexus badge on here it wouldn't be out of place and that's how nice everything over here is made there's one thing that I want to point out of course this car has the driver uh, alertness monitor on the steering wheel and it has traffic sign recognition and these things can be a true pain in the behind if you want to switch it off you can't do that via the uh, infotainment screen but you have to use this cluster on the instrument panel and what you do is you go to a menu where you have the settings I'm filming this with an action cam and then you have the menu the lane departure assist hold down the button switch it off return and then scroll all the way down to RSA to switch off the traffic sign recognition and that's how you switch off those systems it's something you have to do every time to start a car but that's the reality for all modern cars nowadays good seats um, one thing I need to point out about the seats is uh, the seat position is quite high in relation to the car floor for me for my driving position I would prefer to sit a little bit lower but this is as low as the seat goes and when you compare the seat height in relation to the road surface you set up quite high um, you would think this would feel like a large car but all in all the driving experience and the feel of size you have in this car is the same as in the Yaris it looks big on the outside but it feels very nimble and compact on the inside now let's head over to the back to have a peek in the rear passenger space when you get in the rear you'll notice two things that these doors don't swing open all that wide and that's the same for Yaris and that's thing I think it's something that Toyota needs to improve upon if these doors would open a bit further more to a 90 degree position ingress and egress would be easier now I have to squeeze myself into here it isn't all that bad in reality and I must say the seating position is very good I do wish that the seat was a bit higher or that the front was tilted up a bit more so I had more support for my lower legs but with the driver's seat in my driving position I can stow my feet in almost entirely under the driver's seat that's one of the benefits of having the seat up a little higher but yeah seating comfort isn't all that bad for smaller children this is not ideal but I must admit when you're a bit taller um, and you have the seat in a taller person's driving position you can see you don't have much leg room left over here but all in all yeah it's quite basic I noticed that I do not have an armrest in this upper trim level there's only one USB-C charger and the cup holders are in the door now we're gonna do my window test from my seating position the view towards the outside is good when you're small yeah it's yeah it's not ideal but let's open the door once more um, but if you buy this car and you have adult passengers in the rear seat every now and then it isn't all that bad anyway that being said uh, let's go out for a drive and see how this thing drives Okay folks, this is in fact take two, uh, didn't record audio for some reason, but anyway we're on the road so we can find out how the 1.8 140 horsepower hybrid drivetrain performs in the, performs in the new Toyota CHR. Um, there are a lot of things to take in account when they talk about the new CHR. First and foremost, as mentioned, the CHR was the first car that broke the typical Toyota mold with bold styling and inspiring driving and driving dynamics and in the meantime that goes for all new Toyotas heck even the Prius is a very desirable car very nice to drive 
St. Joe's Verjaardag, Jaris Cross, you name it. All Toyotas drive great. So where does that put the CHR? Well, with a new CHR, uh, Toyota repossession, the CHR once again has the most inspiring to drive car. Great driving dynamics, great handling, great steering. And one thing that you'll immediately notice when you start driving this car is that the steering is light and pretty direct. And under all driving circumstances, even if you have a calmer driving style, run errands, you get out of the car and you think, huh, this car is actually really nice to drive. It's a true pleasure to drive. Uh, when you do some harder driving or long highway driving, yeah, uh, the suspension setup and the steering really holds up uh, in terms of driving dynamics. Um, so yeah, it sets a whole new level for other Toyotas. And with that, the new CHR, again, is the benchmark when it comes to driving dynamics for the Toyota models. And I think Toyota will leave it this way this time. So that, that is a unique selling point to the CHR. Um, I just did a little bit of paved road, and now we're on asphalt road once again. And I must say that um, what stands out to me, besides the suspension and the steering setup, the spring comfort and the directness of the steering, is how quiet the suspension is and how quiet these tires is. This is the upper trim level, 41.8 hybrid. This is the executive with the whole nine yards you can get more extras higher trim levels but for that you need to have the two liter hybrid but this car comes with the 19 inch wheels and they really play well with the suspension um, as said it leans to the sportier side without getting harsh i think if you opt for the gr sport model uh, as in all the other toyota models with the gr sport uh, package uh, they change the suspension and uh, some stiffness added stiffness to the body work um, but in my opinion the chr doesn't need it it's sporty without getting harsh and still there is enough ride comfort and going back to the tires the tires really suit this car uh, really well but if you lean towards a more comfortable and calmer driving style and you want to have a bit more comfort something that i can imagine you should up for the lower trim levels with the 17 or 18 inch wheels i think that would add more comfort to this car but as it stands with these 19 inch wheels i find this very appealing as i mentioned in the interior segment the outgoing model was criticized for being a bit too cramped maybe claustrophobic on the interior Interior, and that's much less the case for this car okay the windows aren't that high but the overall visibility towards the outside is just great um, approaching an intersection look left and right the a pillars aren't in the way the mirrors aren't in this way and these little windows in front of the doors yeah give the car a lot of good oversight and overall visibility and the same goes for the rear view mirror uh, the view to throughout the rear window is just great and this trim level even has a digital mirror now it's a screen and it uses the camera uh, above the license plate but um, under all circumstances the visibility is just great and I think the new CHR separates itself from its predecessor in that respect that the overall visibility is much better mirrors are nice and big and of course this upper trim level has a surround view monitor with some tricks about on its sleeve but even if you don't have that and if you don't have the parking sensors it's very easy to uh, estimate where the outline of the vehicle is when you're parking the car and speaking of parking the new chr comes standard as all toyotas with the toyota safety sense package all the driver safety system and driver assistance systems are incorporated in, incorporated in the safety sense and one of the key benefits of that system is that it can help prevent uh, minor fender benders and small parking damages um, when you're maneuvering or parking the car the, the sensors are continuously aware of small obstacles around the car that you may not see from the driver's seat when you have those really short poles uh, on the sidewalks and you turn in uh, too much and you would hit the car in the sill or in the door uh, safety sense is aware of those obstacles and it just stops the car it sounds a warning 
and when you decide to carry on yeah, then you will hit it but the only one to blame then is yourself and insurance companies have picked on upon that and they give a nice discount when you have a Toyota with a safety sense package because you really can tell and insurance companies really can tell that um, it saves a lot on those minor damages it really helps to prevent uh, those little parking accidents now as said the uh, overall visibility is good and the interior doesn't feel that grand as in the outgoing model but I must say I'm not the tallest person as mentioned I'm 173 but if you're any taller than I am over 180 I would say this interior may feel a little bit cramped uh, I don't have much arm room so to speak in terms of width uh, when I move my arms I immediately hit the door panel and my right elbow is constantly hitting the center console now that's never a problem if you have your hands on the steering wheel as you're supposed to do and as I said the seat is quite high up in relation to the car floor and if you're any taller than I am you may hit the roof especially when you don't have this glass uh, big sunroof uh, option so that's something that you have to keep in mind on the other hand leg room is just great and I can imagine that if you have any longer legs you don't have the issue that you smack it into the door panel or this uh, button cluster for the windows or the center console um, leg room in this car is good but as said if you're a taller person and you like this car uh, please go test fit it before you buy or test drive it so now we know that the 1.8 140 horsepower hybrid drivetrain suits the new Toyota CHR really well there are two more things I want to talk about first being the fuel economy brochure advertises an average fuel consumption of 4.3 liter per hundred kilometers um, I've done a lot of driving on highway I think 50% highway 50% back roads the weather is getting better it's 15 degrees Celsius out right now and my average fuel consumption is 4.7 liters per hundred kilometers and it's pretty darn good when you consider the, uh, the aerodynamics and the size and the weight of the vehicle and I think when the weather gets better it's a bit nicer than it is now it was cold this morning I think you can get to 4.5 liters per hundred kilometers average fuel consumption which is pretty darn good and the last thing that I want to talk about even despite the fact the weather is super sunny are the headlights uh, all CHRs come with LED headlights as standard this upper trim level has automatic high beams and it has adaptive high beams the automatic high beams are super fast to respond to oncoming traffic when there is oncoming traffic long before that you will blind them they go to low beams so it's really fast to respond unlike the Hyundai Kona in this here test uh, the adaptive high beams work really well they respond even to smaller uh, vehicles like bicycles and motorcycles they make a nice cutout but I do wish that the high beams were a bit brighter and the reeds and light image on the road was a bit more even there seem to be a little bit dark spots here and there but that's the one only real complaint I have about this car together with the fact that this car may be a bit too cramped for taller persons anyway that being said let's head out to the middle of nowhere where I'll give my final thoughts on this new Toyota CHR see you in a minute and once again we ended in the middle of nowhere and by the way this color is called midnight teal on overcast days when it gets a bit cloudy as it does right now it blends in with the black of the roof but in sunlight and there's the sun once again it really pops out it's a really nice and classy blue shade beautiful color anyway what are my thoughts on the new Toyota CHR well it's obvious that design wise they stayed true to the original first generation of the coupe high rider um, Toyota did listen to their consumers and they made the improvements especially in the rear passenger space in the interior space and the overall practicality of the car if you have adult passengers 
traveling with you in the rear seat for longer distances and you do that on a regular basis all in all it isn't a bad place to be but if you're looking for a family car i think the toyota salesman or woman will point towards a corolla cross hybrid that's more of a practical car the biggest achievement in my opinion is how much they have been able to improve on the suspension setup and the steering of the car. It's a really inspiring and engaging car to drive and it's quite an achievement I think uh, when you take the qualities of the outgoing model in mind. Uh, it didn't scare away the traditional Toyota buyer demographic and has also attracted a lot of new buyers coming from other brands and I think the new CHR is capable of doing that too. It isn't the cheapest car as tested. It's 46,000 euros but that's Dutch prices for you but yeah on the other hand it's a no-brainer residual value is just great it is a depreciating asset but still uh, it holds its value value very well and yeah you have 10 years of warranty so yeah when you have the money this sort of is a no-brainer especially when you're already a Toyota owner so yeah a uh, car that surprised me in many many ways um, only thing you have to keep in mind if you're a taller person yeah go test with the car it can be a bit too cramped in the driver's seat anyway that being said i hope you liked following me along if you did please subscribe to my channel put on notifications give me a like if you like what you see and if you have any questions or constructive feedback let me know down below in the comment box and also if you want to help support the channel you can do so by buying me a coffee for that i'll leave the link down below in the description box for now, I would like to thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye!